Um, I, I always like to define any topic that I share because it's always good to know what we are talking about. So today I believe prosperity. What is prosperity? Um, when I looked at the word prosperity in the um, root word, it's actually a French word that means uh, prosperate. It means good fortune, flourishing or thriving condition good fortune, wealth, success in anything good or desirable, right? And then when I look at the Greek, it has multiple words. One of them is plenty. One of them is expensiveness, magnificence. And um, when I look at the Hebrew, it means uh, blessing. It means um, abundance. It means health, peace. At times when we talk about uh, prosperity, it comes along with peace. That's one thing I've noticed too. Peace and prosperity come hand in hand. That's why most times when a nation will pray, they'll pray that God give our nation peace and prosperity. Can you imagine you have prosperity but you don't have peace? If you're prosperous but you don't have health, you don't have peace. Oh my God. Then what's the use of that prosperity? Can you imagine if you, if you are prosperous, but you have bad character? What's the use of that prosperity? Because it's just for you, for yourself. So I think that when we, when we talk about prosperity, we should also um, include peace and, and good character. And, and because the Bible says that God would never establish anything or anybody in, in unrighteousness. If God is going to establish and enhance or expand our lives or, or our ministries, he has to do it in a good way. He has to do it from the inside out. And then the blessing will flow. Because God knows that if I bless Edith, Edith is going to be a blessing to somebody else. If I bless Mommy Christine, she's going to be a blessing to somebody else. If I, if I bless Pastor Peter, he's going to be a blessing to someone else. God always thinks about other people who are around you for you to, to bless them. Let's see what Psalm chapter 35 verse 27. Somebody, it says, Let them shout for joy and be glad. Who favor my righteous cause? And let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified. Who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants? So, the Bible is telling us that God takes pleasure. God is happy. God is content. God is in a good mood. Wow, 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 wow. God is okay in your prosperity because you are his servant. You cannot be a servant of God and your life is not prospering. According to what we have read. Who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant? As long as you are serving God because servants usually serve. God is a good master. God is a good boss. That you cannot serve him for free. When Peter asks Jesus, Jesus, we have left everything to serve you. We have left everything to follow you. We have left everything to worship you. We have left everything to proclaim the gospel. We have left our family members. What was the response of Jesus? He said, Peter, I will not only bless you here on this earth, but I will also bless you in heaven. You will have two blessings. One in this world and the other after this life. Because you are my servant and I desire to prosper you. And I take good pleasure 
in your prosperity. As you and I, we serve in operable ministry. As you and I, we serve in whatever capacity, whatever responsibility that God has given us. I want to assure you, child of God, I want to encourage you and assure you, servants of God, that God desires, that God wants your prosperity. It is not a crime for God to bless you. Of all people, you are his servant. You are the one working for him. God is not a wicked boss. If you work for him, he will compensate you accordingly. In many ways, he will bless you. The blessing can come through material substance. That prosperity can come through mental substance, like wisdom, understanding, revelation, insight, truth. That you will know that truth and that truth will set you free. Prosperity can come through emotional stability. Prosperity can come through peace of mind. Prosperity can come through good health. These are all these are blessings that just, just because you cannot see or touch something doesn't mean that you have not been blessed. What about things that you cannot see but they are real? What about when you wake up every night, you're waking up in your right frame of mind? Yes, Lord. What about when you wake up, you're able to move around, you're able to talk? Yes, Lord. That's, that's prosperity, good fortune, abundance. You have an opportunity to hear the word of God. You have an opportunity to be in the presence of God. You know how many people who desire who the enemy is fighting them for them not to pray, for them not to hear the word of God. That's prosperity. Child of God, it is God's desire to prosper us in all that we do. Because Jesus said, as we seek him first, his kingdom, his righteousness, kingdom mandate, kingdom activities, he said, I will add all these things unto you. He said, I know you have needs, financial needs. You have to pay your rent. You have to pay school fee for your children. I, Jesus, is able to give you life and life in abundance. Because you are my servant. You are my son. You are my daughter. You are seeking me first and the kingdom. Why won't I bless you? Why won't I be good to you when you are my son? When you are my daughter and I desire your well-being and your welfare in life. He said, I've, I've gone to, 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 to build mansions for you. So prosperity in, in the midst of famine. Prosperity in the midst of when when you're not in, in a suitable condition, can you still prosper? Genesis chapter 26 from verse 1. It says, there was a famine in the land. Again, besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Jara. There was famine in the land. When there's famine... Things are dry. When there's famine, things are dead. Famine could be in many ways in your life. In this context, there was a famine in the land where Isaac dwelled. Guess what happened? He went to the king. He was looking for connections. He was looking for a network. You know what? This, this this current state that I'm in, I need I need to get an answer. Let, let me go talk to the king. Let me go see the king. But look what happened. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, 
do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Yes, there was famine. Isaac is looking for good land. He's looking for a place that is flourishing. He's looking for a land that is prosperous. But child of God, the question is, can God still bless you in a famine land? Can God still bless you in a condition that is not plenty? That is not favorable, that is not flourishing. That is not that is not suitable. You cannot plant anything. Oh my God. Jesus said with man, yes, it's impossible. Naturally, it's impossible. But look what the Bible says. Behold, I will do a new thing. And it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I, God, will cause roads in the wilderness. Are there, are there roads in the wilderness, child of God? No. I will cause rivers, not just one river. Oh, God. He didn't, just, he didn't say, I will cause water. He said, I will cause rivers. Not just one water. I will cause rivers in the desert. Child of God, are there, are there waters in deserts? No. It shows that. Is there anything too difficult for God? Yes, with man, yes, it's impossible. With me, yes, I can do it. I can do it. Look, look, look at the humanness of Isaac. Isaac has tried everything. He has gone to see the king. Now he wants to relocate to go look for good opportunities. That's what that's what he would do as a human being. That's what you and I wish we would do as a human being. Our first instinct to find a way out for ourselves, to look for solutions on our own, to call our aunties and our uncles. Uncle, can you send me Uganda shillings? But look what happened. The Lord appeared to him and said, Isaac, I don't want you to go down to Egypt. I have a good plan. I want you to live here. In this land that you're in. This land. This land is in famine. Yes, I know. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> God knows that yes. I, I know the condition of this land. I know the type of people are in this land. I know. But I have an eating agenda for you. And I'm going to tell you. Dwell in this land. I will be with you. Oh my God. Oh my God. And bless you. Wow, wow, wow. I will be with you and bless you. Jesus said, if you abide in me and I abide in you, because the word abide means to be with somebody. Isaac, I am going to be with you, but I want you to be with me. Through obedience and faith. We can be with God. Through obedience and faith. He said Isaac. I am with you in this famine land. I am. I am in this land as well. We shall make it in this land. I will bless you. No matter the condition. No matter how hard the system is. No matter the pandemic or epidemic. I am God. Is there anything too difficult, too hard, too complex, too tough for me? I don't care about your credit score. I don't care about your credit history. He said, for to you and your descendants, I give all these lands. This, 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 I want you to stay in this land. This land is yours. Right now, you're experiencing a temporary famine. It's not going to last. Even in the midst of this famine, I will still bless you. I will still make a way for you, Isaac. 
because I have promised you and your descendant to give you guys this land. And I want you to stay in this land because this land is your portion. This land is your possession. Arise, Isaac, and possess. God is saying, we shall arise and possess Canada. We didn't come to Canada for nothing. We didn't come to spend years in Canada and, and, then, and then go back empty-handed. God brought us in this land called Canada for a reason. To bless us, for us to accomplish his mandate in this land called Canada, specifically in this city called Toronto. We shall arise and possess, and the wealth of this land called Canada shall belong to all of us in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says the wealth of the land is for all, even the king eats of it. We shall eat of the, of, 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 of the fruit of this land. We are qualified to eat of the fruit of this land called Canada. Canada shall open for us. Let all the treasures of Canada open for us. Let all the treasures of Uganda open for you guys in Uganda. Let the treasures of the land of Uganda open for you. That land, Uganda, shall flourish. That's the land that you have given us. We shall flourish in it. We will not go empty-handed. Just as you did for the children of Israel. They didn't leave Egypt empty-handed. They possess everything. They brought things along. The golds, the silvers. No. No matter. It doesn't matter how long we have been here. This is our time, our season. That God says we shall prosper in this land called Canada. No matter. No matter if it's, peeps, if it's a famine, if it's a pandemic. No, no, no. We shall flourish. And I will make your descendant multiply as the stars of heaven. Oh my God. God is just telling. He said, hey Isaac, man, <laughs> my plans for you to give you abundance. I will give to your descendants all these lands. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. The same blessing he pronounced on Abraham is the same blessing on Isaac. And because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandment, my statutes, and my laws, so Isaac dwelt in Jara. So God is saying, continue to serve me, continue to obey my voice, continue to keep my principles, my commandments, my laws, continue to do my work because I desire in the prosperity of my servants. You're not serving me in vain. You're not seeking me for nothing. Because I am a rewarder of those who diligently seek me. I will reward them here on this earth and I will reward them in heaven. I am a good God. I am a good God.